Texas. Tell me about your upbringing. My father was a professional wrestler. He was one of the Kentuckians. Uh, and he went all over, all around the, the country. He was a main eventer. So we were moving um, every, we were moving three, four times a year. Um, I lived in 21 different regions of the country, 21 different uh, regions the, before I started first grade. Okay. So you lived all over the country. Yeah, I lived all because my dad would, we'd go to a territory, he'd get, go in, go over, get over, work a program, boom, the, uh, the other guys run to the next territory. And then, you know, it was kind of like a, a, a domino effect. Yes. So then in uh, 19, I guess 69 or 70, uh, in the, the summer break after I finished first grade, we, uh, we all lived together, Jake, Robin, Joe Lynn, and myself. We all lived together in Gainesville, Texas. But in, uh, dad came home uh, from Florida and we had to move because he had been working for us. Uh, from what I'm understanding, he worked for the sheriff's department doing some as a narc, I guess, is the story I had heard. Mm. And uh, anyway, we moved in the middle of the night. Jake and Joe Lynn stayed in Texas with their mom and stepfather. And then uh, Robin and uh, my dad and mom and I, uh, we moved to uh, Bossier City, Louisiana. Dad went to work for uh, Leroy McGurk as, as the booker. So, all right, so the South, more or less. Oh yeah, Louisiana. Well, yeah, I mean, I, but I was I've been all over, and then uh, you know I worked. Let's see, gosh, uh, my folks. Uh, you know, marriages are really hard, and uh, it, theirs didn't make it. And uh, I believe I was twelve years old or so, right around there, and uh, some things were going on. But I had never, uh, I didn't know about it till many years later. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and and I have to tell people I I, I can't fathom this, that situation. Oh uh, God, my heart goes out to anybody that's been abused or anything like that. That never happened to me. I oh I hate myself sometimes for not knowing, you know. But you don't, you know. Uh, you know, and my heart goes out to them, and 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 I just I I just pray that that they're living happy lives now, you know. Yes. Uh, so, but uh, I lived on the road with my dad uh, from like 13 on up, you know, so I was without uh, adult supervision. I was on the road in the dressing rooms with the boys partying hard, you know, I was like, I guess the Mackenzie Phillips of wrestling, mm -hmm. you know, uh, when I was 15, uh, well, yeah, 15 years old, I went to work at a gas station. The first one up in uh, Bossier City, then we moved and we were down in uh, Baton Rouge. So I was at an Exxon station there and that's back and forth between the two. Uh, but I was working, I was a ring crew because the first time I set the ring up, I was nine years old with my uncle Luke, Luke Brown, my dad's tag team partner. Oh, okay. So yeah, I just bought one of the rings from the old Mid-South Territory from Bobby Fulton. I've got it in my in behind my garage here. I can't wait to set it up. I Amazing. I helped the welder build this ring when I was 14 years old. And I was in the ring working out in it last year. So it's still good to go. It's full but, circle. I mean, we, yeah, we built it right. But anyway, uh, but I was the ring crew for Bill Watts in uh, Mid South. And then uh you know, in all my life, I was geared for pro wrestling. Then I had uh, my tonsils taken out when I was 17, and uh, they they messed up. The anesthesiologist nicked the back of my windpipe, the pharynx, and uh, they filled me up with the gas, and I died. I flatlined on the table for two minutes. They did an emergency surgery, opened me up here, and here the scars are still real, you know, big ran rubber tubes into my chest cavity and around my head and they had to leave this all open from april the the second to august the 13th of that wow year. Uh, i did not eat food that whole time i was you know but anyway i get out of the hospital i was in a coma for two weeks oh it was rough um uh, but you know i wasn't my time to go yet uh there was still stuff that you know our creator wanted me to do, and that's exactly what I'm going to keep moving forward for. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely hard, you know, 
being able to go through all those things, you know, you're on the road, you got all these health issues that you're trying to overcome and work through, but you know, you're still here with us and I'm, and it's amazing to see, you know. Well, yeah, this was when I was just 17 though. I went through this and then, uh, so I I went through and, uh, you know, it had always, I always wanted to be a wrestler. Well, uh, I, I kept on, I got, I went from 230 to 128 pounds. It took me a whole year to gain my weight back. Mm -hmm. I gained my weight back. And then, you know, the, the way you broke in the old time ways is you had to get in the ring and, and shoot with guys, mm -hmm. you know? So who do I get is George Weingroff. Now George was legally blind, but he wrestled by feel and what a wrestler and what a shoot, you know, he, uh, we were out. Matter of fact, I was just talking to him about two weeks ago. Uh, first time in years. Well, since that time, for the first time, boy, I tell you what, we got in there and we went at it. And I was two hundred and thirty pounds. I, I wasn't in the best shape or anything. I was, you know, a little pudgy. And uh, boy, I mean, he he wore me a new one. But uh, I mean, he wore me out. But I never quit. You know, it was over. You know, and then so I came back the next week, and the next week. We started wrestling and everything, and and he couldn't he couldn't get me the same way that he'd gotten me before because I was a great wrestler. I was never, uh, you know, it's not saying much, but I was undefeated in high school. But you got to admit, I mean, re remember, I only wrestled for a year, and a, I mean, one season and a half of the other one when my sister was uh, kidnapped. So I didn't get to complete that year. But all my high school, I was undefeated for, you know, ninth and half of 10th grade. But uh, and then the rest of the schools I went to didn't have uh, wrestling teams. But anyway, uh, so the second then George went to my dad and he said, you know, he's ready. He can go. And my dad looked at me and he said, well, this business is not for you, son. I've already lost you once. You know, I'm not going to let you get in. So that, you know, broke my heart. Well, uh, Dusty had come into New Orleans and I was, uh, uh, we were, gosh, at St. Bernard Municipal Auditorium. And uh, I was talking to Dusty and uh, Dusty, I guess, felt it was returning a favor. He knew I was going to get in there and get in anyway. Uh, he told me, come on down to Florida because my dad was the one that gave Dusty his big break in 1969 when Dusty was getting ready to quit the business for good. And uh, my dad worked with him in Dallas and changed everything. And boom, the American dream, you know. So uh, Dusty was going to return the favor. So I went down to Florida, but my dad had gotten a hold of everybody and told him not to book us, you know, not not to book me. And I just found out recently that J.J. Dillon was the one that went to Dusty and said, hey, the kid's here every night with his bag. Boom, boom, boom. You know, give him a shot. So Dusty calls me in the office and he said, OK, he said, uh, he goes, well, I want to because my, my real name was Michael Smith, you know. <laughs> so he said, I, I said, I, I wanted to do this on my own. And Dusty was the one that gave me the name Sam Houston. He goes, baby, you're Michael Sam Houston from Waco, Texas. You know, the wildcat from Waco, Texas is what he, you know. And then I had to learn all this stuff about Waco, Texas. But, you know, not. but I, I did get to go there and wrestle there a couple of times. So that was kind of cool. It's amazing how back in those days with, with wrestlers, you know, you'd have these guys like they'd be billed from certain places but they're never actually from there like parts unknown or oh yeah yeah <laughs> well I, I mean you just i guess sometimes you know when when uh whenever the thing happened with the fbi and david koresh and all that stuff i wanted to get away because i was starting to work for vince i wanted to get away from waco texas and everything and at the time we were living in a uh apartment complex uh, yeah, outside of Euless, Texas, and the name of it, the the name where we were at was uh, the Villages of Bear Creek. So they, that's why I, I changed from Waco to Bear Creek, Texas. 